Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Today, my revamped 1 to 99 mining guide. With mining, you are able to gather different resources from rocks across RuneScape, and these are typically ores you may use along this mything skill. All you need is a trusty pickaxe and a lot of patience. Mining itself is, in my opinion, one of the worst skills to train due to how slow it is. And also because PVM drops over the years have devalued items related to mining by quite a bit. The good thing about it is that it offers a ton of methods to train with. If you find this video useful, remember to subscribe with notifications on, and consider becoming a channel member with the join button below for tons of extra benefits here, most importantly instant access to our Discord. These are all the quests that provide mining experience as of the time of making this video. Remember that some of them have a mining level requirement themselves, and you may not be able to do them right away. Now, for quests I recommend outside of the ones I was referring to, there aren't many you absolutely need to open the door to an important training method, so most of these are simply important suggestions for extra benefits. A mandatory quest we will do is Bone Voyage. This grants access to Fossil Island, which is where you will find the Volcanic Mine, and also which we will talk about later. You should also do the Shiloh Village quest to access Gem Rocks, but ideally you also want it in order to have access to Duradel, the best Slayer Master in the game. A quest that isn't required is Song of the Elves. One of the methods can be done in the Crystal City of Prifinus, and by training here you can get Crystal Shards. I also recommend completion of Beneath the Cursed Sands in order to have access to the Circlet of Water. This is going to act as an unlimited source of water whenever you're in the desert for one of the methods we will talk about too. Starting with suggestions, you should get 100% Lovakin's favor in order to use the Blast Mine. This is a pretty interactive way to train with the skill for more profit at the lower levels. And now for Achievement Diaries. The Varrock one gives you the Varrock armor, which we will mention next. The Hard Karamja Diary grants access to the underground gem mine in Shila Village, and the Hard Desert Diary unlocks a direct teleport to the Granite Quarry, uh, all of which we will talk about later. Alright, let's begin with useful items, starting with pickaxes. Without this tool, you can't even train the skill, so grab yourself the best pickaxe you can use at your level. The Infernal Pickaxe is obtained by combining a Dragon Pickaxe with a Smoldering Stone, and when mining, it has a chance of combusting the ore, which grants smithing experience in the process with certain ore. The Crystal Pickaxe is obtained by combining a Dragon Pickaxe with a Crystal Tool Seed. This is 3% more effective than a Dragon Pickaxe and will provide slightly more experience per hour, but you will need to charge it with Crystal Shards eventually. Up next, we have the Prospector Outfit. You get 4 pieces of this gear at the Mother Load Mine, and when wearing the full outfit, you will gain a 2.5% more experience when training. It's also required for the Falador Diary, so a nice 2 for 1. When training at the Mining Guild, which I will again mention later, you may obtain unidentified materials. With them, you can buy Mining Gloves, Superior Mining Gloves, and Expert Mining Gloves, all with their own passive effect which revolves around a rock not depleting when mining it, and it goes up by Glove tier. Remember the Varrock Diary? Well, the Varrock Armor has a 10% chance of granting 2 ores when mining a rock, going up according to their tier. From Iron all the way to Amethyst, and the Varrock Armor 4 also works as a Prospector Jacket. Last and definitely not least, the Celestial Ring is an item you may purchase with Stardust, obtained from Fallen Stars and it also provides an invisible plus 4 mining boost. If you charge it with Stardust, you have a 10% chance of mining an extra ore up to Adamant, with some exceptions. Unlike my previous videos where the only plugin I have for you is the Idle Notifier and maybe one or two more related to the skill, mining has a ton of plugins and pretty much one of them for each method. So here are my favorites. The very first one is the Motherload Mine. It provides a mostly visual aid on your screen to know what's going on, and what places you're able to mine, as well as more tooltips. Next, we have the Blast Mine. This is incredibly helpful because it will highlight the places where you can stand or move away from when interacting with the activity. There's also a plugin for the Volcanic Mine, and this is the best one because, quite frankly, it's the one I had least experience with. So, definitely helps out as the game goes on. The last one for now, or rather last ones for now, are plugins related to shooting stars. You may have them on your client for easy access, or you can join the Star Mining Discord, which I will go more into detail when we're talking about this method. Alright, scapers, let's begin. Our mining adventure is going to start by, well, not doing any mining at all. This skill is absolutely painful during the early levels, and we will be questing to avoid spending hours just for a few thousand experience. Now, remember, these are not quest guides, but the quests are very simple to follow with the quest helper. You are going to go to Falador and do Doric's quest, then head to Artie to do Plague City, for which you need a few items, and finally with level 10 Agility, 10 Herblore, and the 25 Thieving, all of which you can get really quickly, you are going to do the Dig Side quest. 
All of these will give you a combined 19,000 experience, and you will jump from levels 1 to 33 without even holding a pickaxe. There are other quests you can do for a few more levels, but they are a little lengthier and not really worth it in my opinion. Now, let's begin the actual mining adventure. Most of these will start at level 33, since that's what we get from questing. And our first stop is going to be Iron Ore. You may go to a spot with three iron rocks next to you, and simply mine and drop them. This is known as power mining since you're discarding all the ore, and banking them is less experience per hour. If you're an ironman, you may actually want to keep them. If you plan on dropping them, a few good spots to do this are Al Karat, Mount Karum, the Verdant Valley on Fossil Island, and when you eventually reach level 60, the mining guild has a deposit box nearby if you want to keep your spoils. By doing this, you can reach upwards of 70 or even 75,000 experience per hour, and for this, I recommend enabling the option to shift click items in order to empty your inventory quickly if you plan on dropping the ore. If you're on mobile, simply choose the option tap to drop to do it slightly faster. Our next method is available at level 30, but I recommend at least level 40 to start training here because of something I will mention in a little bit. The Motherload Mine offers more relaxing and AFK training, but the downside is that experience per hour is really low. You may reach this place by going to the easternmost building in Falador, going downstairs, and then entering the cave directly south. Bring a pickaxe with you, and once inside, mine these two little rocks to go to the central area for a bank. The main idea behind the Motherload mine is quite simple. Go to any spot with ore veins, and then mine them until you have a full inventory of pay dirt. Go to the main area, and dump them on the hopper. The number on the top left corner of your screen represents how much pay dirt you have processed. Initially, the maximum amount of rocks it can hold is 81, and because of this, if you make it so you have 80 pay dirt in there, you can mine yet another inventory to go back. There's a sack south of the hopper. When it's full, click on it to get your identified ore like coal or gold, and then run to the deposit box until it's empty to repeat the process. At one point you will notice the water wheels stop moving, so you can click on a box nearby to grab a hammer, and then prepare them for the water to keep flowing. For this you will get a little bit of smithing experience. When you identify paid dirt, there's a small chance you will get an item called Gold Nugget. These are what you need to purchase rewards at the store with Prospector Percy. If you trade him, you may buy some goodies including the mining outfit. If you talk to him instead, he will give you an option to unlock two extra benefits. A sack with double capacity, and the upstairs veins which are better to use. The order in which I recommend unlocking the stuff is the following. The bigger sack, the upstairs area which you can only use at level 72, the prospector outfit, the coal bag, the gem bag, and then you may use leftover nuggets on ore packs for slightly more profit. Our next method is a lot simpler than the motherload mine, and this time we will simply go to Shaila village to mine gem rocks. If you visit this place right after finishing the quest, you will only have access to a few rocks in the north the western corner of the village. After the hard Karamja diary though, you may head to the gem rock mine where there's a lot more, which is downstairs. Gems are not as valuable as they once were because of all the monsters that drop them, but it's a nice place to visit if you want a change of pace. You can get from 40 to 60k XP per hour depending on your level and how much attention you are paying. And they are slightly more AFK than iron ore because they take slightly longer to mine. Now for this next method I have a disclaimer. The volcanic mine could be pretty much its own video, so what I will do is give you a summary of what you need to do, and then if you want to give it a try, check out the link in the description to see a few full runs to get the hang of it. The volcanic mine is a more engaging and a dangerous activity to train the skill. It is located on the eastern part of Fossil Island, and although you can start this activity at level 50, 70 is recommended to make it more efficient. There's a bank right outside for you to resupply, and the NPC nearby will charge you Numulite for every game. Or you can pay 3000 for it for permanent access to the mine. Copy the gear you see on screen and adjust to what you have. We are looking at high prayer bonus and the prayer potions because we will have some monsters down there that can attack you. First, I will show you the brain dead way to do it, and then I will jump onto mass worlds or in case you want to do it in a group. For some odd reason, you can do the following for upwards of 50,000 experience per hour. Go downstairs, protect from range on, and then when the game starts, head all the way north, and then you must click on your water vessel right next to the lava. This is going to create a rock where you can stand. Follow this route by dousing water on the lava, and then click on the vent up north. Go south, and then click on the vent east. Once you have done that, go back to this specific place, and if the chamber is blocked, mine the rock. If it isn't, grab the nearby rock, click on the chamber, and then mine it. Each of these actions will grant an upwards of 50 points, up to a cap of 400. When you reach 400 points, go upstairs, start another game, and repeat the process. 
This is only really recommended for 10,000 points for you to upgrade your water vessel from 35 to 70, and again for that 50,000 experience without paying too much attention. For the actual way of doing this, which is heavily recommended to do it in a big group to finish the game, you and your team will need to check two or all three of the vents in the mine. When you do so, it will tell you the corresponding pressure. In order for the pressure to go up, use a rock on the chamber related to the vent you checked. For the pressure to go down, simply mine the rock to remove it. You need to avoid the two of these percentages to get to either 0 or 100%. If this happens, the mine will collapse and everyone inside will die. Once that's done, go to the southern part of the mine by dousing water on the lava, and then stand next to this big rock to start mining it. Eventually, it will break down and it will start moving along. Follow it around, remembering to keep pressure in check, and creating new places to stand on with your water container. At around 5 minutes and 10 seconds, you will need to check your vents again, since they will reset, and go to the chamber if the pressure needs to go up or down. Eventually, the rock will be pretty small, and the game will fully end when it makes it to the lava whirlpool on the opposite side of the cave. Go upstairs and resupply for the next run. This is a lot easier said than done, which is why I heavily recommend checking out the full run in the unlisted video below. A huge thank you to my friends Jake and Max for helping out with the runs for this video, and also in the description I will include a few pictures brother Max sent me for different roles when doing this in a coordinated group. Up next we have the Blast Mine, and it is a lot less complicated than the Volcanic Mine. All you need is a chisel, a tinderbox, and as much dynamite as possible. Grab a full inventory of it, and follow my character to get a pretty decent cycle to mine the rocks. You will click on the rock, click on it again to light up the dynamite, and then go to the next number of sequence for you to be safe spotted. At numbers 3 and 4 you should mine and place dynamite on two spots for it to be more efficient. Once you have done these six spots, pick up the ore that drops and put it on the nearby sack. If you wait for long enough on the inventory they will disappear, so you want to grab them quickly. Repeat this process until you're out of dynamite, grab more, and do it all over again until your target goal. When you're done, go to the spot to collect your ore, and you're ready for the next step. I will now talk about three alternative methods, all of which I don't recommend too much, but they can be a breath of fresh air. The first one is mining shooting stars. This isn't sponsored or anything, but you can join the star miners discord or their friends chat in order to get calls for fallen stars. Go to the world and location specified, click on the rock to mine stardust, and wait for the bard above it to deplete for the next tier of the star. They can be mined starting at level 10, and they can go all the way up to level 90. So make sure to hunt for stars you can work on. The great thing about it is that they are pretty AFK, and you don't need to pay a lot of attention to them. The downside is that XP per hour is actually pretty bad, and it doesn't offer any profit other than you using the stardust on gem packs at the store, which you can of course find south of Falador Bank to buy stuff, including the Celestial Ring and the pieces to recolor the Prospector outfit. Up next we have 3 Tick Granite. Now, since this is the first time we talk about Tick Manipulation on the 99 guides, I will give you a very quick rundown. Tick Manipulation is using items on your inventory to, well, manipulate the rate at which you can get supplies like rocks or fish. It does something like refreshing the chance for you to do something, so you may use the Granite Quarry by doing the following. Take low-level herbs with Swamp Tar and the Pestle and Mortar, along with your standard mining gear. Start mining granite, and as soon as a rock depletes, use a Swamp Tar on an herb, immediately followed by clicking on another rock. I held Spacebar, which seemed to work too, and there's a high chance you will automatically mine the granite. After which, you will need to do it again, and again, and again, and again. As you can see in the footage, I just waited for a full inventory and uh, dropped it, because honestly I'm not the best at doing this, as I learned it in about 2 minutes, and it came out pretty okay. It is one of the most click-intensive training methods, but it can provide XP rates from 60k at level 45, all the way up to more than 100,000 experience per hour at high level 90s. I have this as an alternative method, because when I'm thinking of mining, I just think AFK and this isn't something I would ever do on any account. But if you want to speedrun the skill, this is definitely the one. Last and definitely not least, we have Amethyst. At level 92, you can mine these rocks pretty slowly for a whopping 20k XP per hour. But they are a great way to get the pets. And for profit per hour, it isn't that bad either. The only reason you should be doing this is if you're working or focusing on something else, as mining Amethyst can be pretty brain dead and it will only require a few clicks every hour. And now, Legends, what do I personally recommend from levels 1 all the way to 99? I also have a few options for you, but feel free to mix and match according to your playstyle. All of these will start at level 33 because of all the quests, so keep that in mind. To fully AFK the skill, do Iron Ore from 33 to 40, the Mother Load Mine from 40 to 92, 
And finally, Amethyst from 92 to 99. This will take a ridiculous amount of time, so be ready to spend hundreds and hundreds of hours in a smelly cave. For more experience per hour and for a more engaging road to 99, I recommend getting to level 40 with Iron Ore, then head to the Mother Load Mine and stay there until you have the full Prospector outfit. If you're not level 70 yet, go mine some Iron Ore in order to get it over with faster, and at this point you have the option to go to the Volcanic Mine and stay there until 99 or stop at 75 where you will move on to the blast mine for more profit. For the absolute gamers, do the initial quests, then go from 33 to 45 with iron ore, and then you are going to camp at the desert completely destroying your wrists by doing 3 tick granite until you have achieved that beautiful mining cave. And I also hope you have health insurance for your wrists if you ever do this. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it for the mining guide, thank you so much for watching and for making it this far. If you did, make sure to tell me how you would get level 99 mining or if you already have it. A massive thank you to all my channel members, you boys and girls are absolutely insane, and your support goes a long way to feed my starving family. If you want to be a part of this list of legends, click the join button below, to subscribe monetarily and receive a ton of benefits in the videos, in the live streams, and of course in the Discord. Stay tuned for the next video, and of course for the next 1 to 99 guide, where I will show you how to achieve mastery in the agility skill. Have an amazing day, have an amazing week. And I will see you then. Pa 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 pa. Uh, peace.